Hi guys, um, today is, let's see, Thursday the 10th of January. I meant to look before I started and um, I had a rather alarming call this, or text this morning from my father-in-law at about five o'clock that um, he's in severe pain and is probably gonna need a ride to the doctor, so, or the ER. Um, I actually tried to convince him to let me take him to the ER and he wanted to wait and talk to the doctor at eight o'clock. So I have about 15 minutes before eight, I'm all ready to go. Um, and so I'm just quickly gonna film, um, a, you know, just a super quick video just to pop in and say hi. And um, yeah, so um, <laughs> happy holidays, happy new year, um, 2019. Um, let's see, boy, I've already said I'm about 17,000 times. I, we had a great holiday, we had a great Christmas, um, pretty low key, just the two youngest kiddos were home from school. Maddie's already gone back for J term, January term, so she has three weeks of one class, three hours a day, and then um, she'll be back for a week and then starts second semester in February. And Ryan's home, he does not have J-term, and so he's home until the 20th, and then he goes back to school. Um, but we've just, we've had a marvelous time. It's been a really, really nice vacation. I haven't gotten a lot of stitching done. More focused on, you know, the kids and sort of catching them up and um, shopping for them and just, you know, doing it, hanging out with them. Lots of board games, lots of card games, lots of card games. The kids got two new games. I try to get them always, even though they're almost 19 and 20 and 26, I always try to get them a card game or a, some sort of game for Christmas. And um, and a lot of times, you know, when you're sort of shooting in the dark, and eh, sometimes the games aren't that great. But this year, two great winners. One is a card game called The Game that you play as a team against the game. And the other is a game called Quix, um, which, which is a dice game, Q-U-I-X-X. -X. Really fun, really fun. So lots of time doing, doing that kind of stuff and maybe a few stitches here and there and in between. Um, let's see, what else? I Next week, a week from yesterday, um, I go to Ohio for Stitch Away. Super excited for that, super, super excited for that. Um, just excited to have some days dedicated to stitching and um, spending time with Nicole and maybe getting to see a few other people. Um, just, you know, and meeting some new people and um, just, yeah, just really, really, really excited for that. I'm always excited for the next adventure. I've, I figured that out about myself and I think I've always been this way. I really enjoy typically whatever's going on you know at the time if it's if it's my if it's an opportunity to stay home and be at home and be you know just normal at home um, I, I love that I'm a homebody I love that but um, but I always look forward to, to change and to something new and different and I'm I'm and that people are gonna be like no this is not true but I actually am a, very much of an introvert um, I sort of have to force myself to do things um, like retreats and, you know, especially big things. But once I'm there, I always enjoy it and have fun. Um, and so I always look forward to, you know, kind of the next thing, the next different thing that I get to do. And um, so that'll be a lot of fun. And from what Nicole has told me, Stitch Away is just super laid back and, um, no pressure, no, you know, so I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to that. Um, I, I've had a couple of rough days the first part of this week. I had that, I'm not even going to name it because <laughs> I never want to think about it again for 10 years, but I had that procedure that people are supposed to have when they turn 50. I turned 51 this year in June and so I was a little bit overdue for it and um, I, it was rough. It was rough. The actual procedure was not rough, but the uh, prep the day before um, was was really a struggle. And the you know you're on a liquid diet, or at least the way my doctor did it, a liquid diet for 
really it was like 36 hours beforehand and I did not do well with that. Um, that made me very, very puny feeling and I'm, I'm such a baby. I have zero tolerance for like discomfort. So, you know, I was hungry. First I was hungry and then my stomach was upset and and then you have to take the stuff and the stuff, I had a bad reaction to it and it was anyway. So, but the procedure itself went fine. It was all good. I don't have to do it again for 10 years. I'm hoping in 10 years they will redo how you do it and come up with some great new way of doing it. And um, I never have to kind of do that whole thing again. But at any rate, I'm not going to worry about that because that's 10 years away. This is only my second cup of coffee today, so it's I will down it. Um, got rid of my Keurig. I've had a Keurig, I think, for about, I don't know, maybe like five or six years. Um, pretty much from the beginning of when Keurigs came out. So maybe it's actually been longer than that. I've gone through three. I've had three different ones that have broken and had to buy new ones and I really liked them. And this last one, I, I, I just wasn't that pleased with how the coffee was tasting. And I had told my husband that when this one breaks, I'm done. I'm just gonna go back to a regular coffee pot. And I'm the only one that drinks coffee around here unless we have you know, friends or family over. So the Keurig just seemed like the easy thing, but you know, the K-cups aren't, biodegradable and the you can do it where you use regular grounds but it's super messy and it's kind of difficult to work that little thing and so uh, it didn't break down but I was get, coming to the end of my k-cups and um, I just decided that that was enough was enough and so um, got myself a new coffee pot and I'm ha I have you know like regular brewed coffee and it doesn't taste better necessarily than the k-cups but I, I think it just makes me feel better plus I can use the grounds for um, in my compost pile for my garden. So this year, um, I've done compost piles years and years ago, and they're you know they're they're a bit of a pain a little bit, but um, um, yeah. So I hadn't done one for several years, and this year when I got rid of my pumpkins, I had I think I had um, about fifteen or twenty pumpkins in our front front yard and on the back deck and. Um, when I when I it was time to dispose of those, I we typically just throw them away. And the, we have a, a trash can that's for yard waste only, so we typically throw them in there. And there were too many to, you know, f it would have filled it up more than filled it up. And so I decided, oh, let me compost these. And um, so I hauled them. <laughs> it was a great day of exercise because some of them were quite large. I hauled them all to the backyard and um, put them in the garden and had just this huge mound of pumpkins. And so this would have been like the day after Thanksgiving or probably the week after Thanksgiving. And um, we have, a, so we have open space behind us. It's um, it's waterboard property. The, the uh, North Elkhorn River, which is an offshoot of the Platte River, runs behind our house at, at some distance. We can see the river when there are no leaves on the trees, but it's some distance away. And, um, and so all of that property back behind our house, kind of in between the river and us, the river runs at an angle, so there's a, quite a bit of land, um, it is open space, and we have tons of wildlife and birds. Um, this time of year, tons of cardinals. In fact, I think we have um, two sets of cardinals that live pretty much in our trees. Um, tons of blue jays this time of year, which are very pretty, but very mean birds, very, very mean birds. Um, and then of course, lots of sparrows. We have a wonderful woodpecker um, mama that um, likes to peck on the outlet um, metal piece to our fireplace or the exhaust to the house. And um, it literally vibrates the whole house when she does that, but she, she can't harm it, it's metal, but she pecks a lot on the trees. She's, she's not bad about the house. And then, um, and she's had a baby almost every year and the babies are really fun to watch and as they're kind of learning to peck and, you know. But, um, you know, and then sparrows and um, all sorts of great birds. Um, yellow finches are my favorite, we, not this time of year, but in the summer. But then we have a ton of, you know, of course we have voles and moles and raccoons, which are um, a little bit, um, a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, 
mice, we have to be real careful about mice and um, making sure that if they do get in the house, we get them early on and don't let them nest anywhere. And yeah, we're very, I'm very careful about that. I cannot stand, I love, I think mice in stitching is very cute, but I do not want a mice in my house, but you know, we get them in the garage sometimes. And we have to be really careful about like dog food and that sort of thing. But anyway, um, tons of deer back here. And so um, I had a, you know, a really nice kind of where I decided I wanted the compost pile. And so a nice pile of pumpkins in the garden and I can see from the back window from the kitchen window and um, one morning I looked outside and the pumpkins were kind of like spread they were no longer in a nice pile they were kind of like spread across the garden and I thought well did the dogs do that well Mia certainly couldn't Mia weighs 12 pounds there's no way and you know Baxter is pretty strong but and they were kind of broken open and stuff well I think the deer have been um, getting at the pumpkins and so they it, you know it's no big deal they've kind of just spread the pumpkins across the yard a little bit and I suppose it could be raccoons too but some of those pumpkins were pretty big that they kind of like pulled apart and spread across them anyway that's you know kind of funny but um, I'm starting to look forward to gardening and January is always that month where and of course it's a new year and you just think um, oh you know there's just the possibilities of a new year to me are just awesome and um, I don't really do resolutions but I do set goals for the new year and I try to keep them I try to keep them really reasonable and and sort of small because you know then if you accomplish them you can do something else and if you don't you know you know you then that way if you you don't have to feel bad about yourself so that's just my um, but I in January I always start looking for it in January I get tired of the cold without snow so I don't I'm fine if it snows um, I, I mean we live in Nebraska we live in the Midwest I've always lived except for 18 months we lived in Houston Texas I've always lived in you know kind of the Midwest or the West Colorado where we got a lot of snow so I love the snow I, do, I hate driving in it but I like the snow but in January when it's brown and yucky and there's no snow and it's just cold I'm tired of the snow so then I start focusing on spring and gardening and that sort of thing and that always makes me feel a lot better um, the house is decorated in for snow and snowmen so you can kind of see up here I did leave a few trees up as long as they don't have ornaments on them um, and any snow scenes um, or snowmen that aren't overtly Christmas you know if they if they have a candy cane I probably man yeah, I probably don't do those or I do leave like pine cones and boughs up and some red berries and that sort of thing so I'm just kind of looking around to see and I have you know I have quite a few I'm sort of converting though my snowman ornaments and I don't have I don't have a ton um, but I'm sort of not ornaments but snowman decorations to a more primitive style rather than a cutesy style because that matches more my the rest of my house um, but it's kind of hard to find a primitive snowman and um, I actually ordered a couple things on Etsy the other day but I it's you know it's a little bit hard to find um, that real kind of primitive, like, I don't know, like um, even snowmen like 1950s and 60s snowmen were really cutesy. So I, I like stuff sooner than that. But anyway, um, it, yeah, it, it feels good. It felt, so we put seven trees up, we took five down. Um, the kids helped me. It took me to take all the Christmas decorations up, down and switch out for the snowmen and leave one tree up decorated only with snow ornaments. Um, it took the kids and I from seven o'clock in the morning until four o'clock in the afternoon. And then, you know, then I spend the next couple days kind of like, like fluffing and moving things around. And, you know, a lot of times I, a lot of times I'll do that the whole month of January. I'll move stuff around and quite, not quite there. So, okay, so I've talked for 15 minutes. I am so sorry. I'm going to end here and then we'll just do one more video and I'll only talk stitching.